Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare नामाचार्य श्रील हरिदास ठाकुर की जय हो वृंदावन धाम की जय हो मायापुर धाम की जय हो जगन्नाथपुरी क्षेत्र धाम की जय हो गंगा मैया की जय हो यमुना मैया की जय हो वृंद देवी तुलसी महारानी की जय हो ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असम्बल डिवोटिंग ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असम्बल डिवोटिंग ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असम्बल डिवोटिंग हरे कृष्णा आई वेलकम ऑल द वैष्णवास my respected senior devotees for today morning's bhagavatam class beginning of the greatest of great festival of celebrating lord gauranga mahaprabhu's appearance day ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम चैतन्य चरितामृत मध्यलीला चैप्टर एट श्लोक नंबर टू हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी एट
पहले देखुन सन्यासी स्वरूप एबे तो मा देखी मुनि श्याम गोप रूप पहले देखे उन तो मार सन्यासी स्वरूप एब तो मा देखी मुनि श्याम गोप रूप पहले देखी लुन तो मार सन्यासी स्वरूप एबे तो मा देखी मुनि श्याम गोप रूप पहले देखी लुन तो मार सन्यासी स्वरूप एबे तो मा देखी मुनि श्याम गोप रूप पहले देखी लुन तो मार सन्यासी स्वरूप एबे तो मा देखी मुनि श्याम गोप रूप पहले देखी लुन तो मार सन्यासी स्वरूप एबे तो मा देखी मुनि श्याम गोप रूप माता जी पहले देखी लुन तो मार सन्यासी स्वरूप एबे तो मा देखी मुनि श्याम गोप रूप पहले देखी लुन तो मार सन्यासी स्वरूप एबे तो मा देखी मुनि श्याम गोप रूप ट्रांसलेशन बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्रील प्रभुपद पहले इन द बिगिनिंग देखी लोन आई सो तुमार योर सन्यासी स्वरूप फॉर्म एज ए पर्सन इन द रिनाउंस्ड ऑर्डर एबे नाउ तोमा यू देखी सी मुनि आय श्याम गोप रूप फॉर्म एज श्याम सुंदर द काउहर्ड बॉय ट्रांसलेशन रामानंद राय धैन टोल्ड लॉर्ड श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु एट फर्स्ट आई सॉ यू एपियर लाइक ए सन्यासी बट नाउ आई एम सींग यू एज श्याम सुंदर द काउहर्ड बॉय ओम अज्ञान तिमिरंदश ज्ञानाचन शलाकया चक्षुरुन्मुलित ये नस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये तूतले स्वरम कदाय ददा स्व कदा वंदेह श्री गुरो श्रीयुता पदकमल श्री गुरून वैष्णवांश श्री रूप सागर जाता सह गण रघुनाथान्वीताम सचिव साइत सवदूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पदा सह गणना ललिता श्री विशाखान्वीता 
हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपति गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश भाई विषभानुसुति देवी प्रणमा हरि की वाचा कल्पत करुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा सो एक्चुअली आई बिलोंग टू अ ड्राई लैंड वॉलेंटरीली बाय माय चॉइस बट द रेसिडेंट्स ऑफ दिस प्लेस which is not different than vrindavan it's a land which is undescribable they kindly thought that i should have a small glimpse of what is this indescribable land and the combined form of shrimati radharani and shri shri radha gopina ji gopal ji coming as lord gaurang mahaprabhu along with his associates and to speak about them so that i get a small very small glimpse is what this land belongs to what it means to be so this past time in this shloka ramanand rai tells chaitanya mahaprabhu chaitanya mahaprabhu reveals to him the uh, gauranga form first and then later on he reveals to him the sham sundar form and ramanand rai is bewildered he asks him just now you are a gaurang form and now you are in a sham sundar form uh, it is stated in sham gop roopa please reveal to me this mystery so in chaitanya mangal the big be- beginning of chaitanya mangal discussion between damodar pandit and murari gupta damodar pandit asks murari gupta that why shri krishna left his sham varna to assume a golden varna why did he remove his dress as a gallant lover to adopt a dress of sanyasi second question third why did he travel so widely to preach fourth why did he cry when he chanting when he was chanting the name of radha govind and fifth question was why did he distribute prem bhakti in each and every home lochandas thakur this past time is very di- nicely described by his holiness jaypataka swami maharaj in his book gaurang that story begins as a narad muni was traveling throughout this universe chanting the holy name of the lord tasting the name of the lord the sweetness of the name but his heart was very much pained to see he was very much disturbed to see the people of this material world who were so much attached to material existence and people of this kali refused to accept this greatest treasure of the holy name although narad muni was experiences the more experiencing the most 
ecstatic loving symptoms out of this holy name but people of this world couldn't appreciate the holy name he was amazed and felt sorry that the fallen condition of this material people they were bitten by a venomous snake of a kali and if you know when somebody is bitten by a snake then the sensorium the sense of reasoning gets completely bewildered and deteriorated and that is why being bitten by kali they were forgetting krishna and they were mad in pursuing the sense gratification the endless running after of six anarthas and they were living in a philosophy of i and mine this is a nutshell of everyone who is living in this material world philosophy of i and mine six anarthas bewildered state and not ready to accept the holy name of the lord so narad muni thinks contemplates very very deeply and he decides to go to the holiest holy land of dwarka where lord krishna was performing pastime with his queens let us shift our attention to see what was happening in dwarka today shrimati rukmini devi maharani she was very very happy for she came to know that the lord is coming to her house and in her great anticipation although her palace was spotlessly clean she cleaned with her own hands kept a beautiful water pots near the door asked musicians to play music dressed her children very nicely to receive their father and with incense and lamps she was ready to receive lord when lord entered her chambers very gracefully very lovingly very devotionally she held her hand and made him sit on a most beautiful asana and then she held her lotus feet kept that lotus feet on her heart and extremely unusually today instead of smilingly talking to him she started crying very very piteously lord was perplexed with this behavior and he said oh rukmini devi what has happened did i disobey you or have i done anything wrong i remember in the past i hurt you jokingly very badly but i ask for forgiveness i i am really confused what has happened and rukmi devi <coughs> sitting at her his lotus feet <coughs> with tears in her in her eyes she looks at the lord and she says my dear lord your lotus feet are more dear to me than your very self to me but you know that how much love how much taste we get from your lotus feet you don't know this love which devotees experiencing holding there within their heart your lotus feet and 
if you want to understand our love what we experience through your lotus feet you will have to understand what is the love of shrimati radharani what hankering she has by holding the joy she has by holding your lotus feet if you cultivate the mood of radharani and her selfless love then you will be able to understand what i am saying krishna had never heard these things any time in the past he said rukmini devi i just didn't understand what you said what you said is completely unknown to me simultaneously your sentences have captivated my heart i am a supreme lord i understand everything but what is in this three world what is this substance which is most valuable which i don't understand although i am not able to perceive the meaning of your words i am feeling so blissful please please explain me what you want to say when this talk is going on between rukmini devi and krishna about personally experiencing the taste of a love of his pure devotees narad muni enters what is the mood of narad muni just recently he has experienced tremendous pain and agony seeing the pitiful nature of this kali wasis people of this kali yuga and then right in front of him is the most joyful darshan of supreme lord shri krishna so narad muni was experiencing the mixed emotion sometime we living and it is go through these emotions we have extreme pain and we find out as that a person who is going to st- who is standing we meet that person who is going to relieve you of that particular pain so that joy and the pain combination that is what narad muni was experiencing and narad muni started crying uncontrollably tears were flowing through his eyes and he was crying so much that he couldn't speak anything krishna asked him narad muni what is the situation narad muni explains him everything in its detail the agony of his heart the concern the compassion of the representative of supreme lord and that very moment krishna explains to narad muni that what shrimati rukmini devi had told him and he said narad muni in the age of kali i will come with all humility i will come as a devotee myself and i will relish the happiness of my pure devotees not only i will experience the happiness of my pure devotees but i will give it out to everybody and everyone although krishna says i am a supreme lord i will initiate this sankirtan yagya and then something amazing happened krishna revealed his most beautiful form of gauranga in front of narad muni and rukmini devi golden complexion which was like a millions of suns 
very tall, long hand, shaven head. His beauty would put shame to millions of moons and millions of cupid, cupids combined together. Seeing this dazzling form of Krishna as Gauranga Mahaprabhu, Narad Muni completely fainted. He was stunned. He couldn't speak. And Krishna immediately revealed his original form as Krishna and with a loud voice he woke up Narad Muni. Narad Muni got, got up, but he was very, very sad because he wanted to see this form of the Lord again. And Krishna, it is written in uh, Chaitanya Mangal by Lochandas Thakur, that this was the first ever time Krishna revealed his form as a Gauranga Mahaprabhu and he is going to come to Narad Muni. And he told Narad Muni, please go to Shiv Loka, go to Brahma Loka, go to Uddhava and tell them that I am going to come as a Gauranga. I am going to reveal the secret of the holy name. I am going to preach the pure love of Godhead. And not only that, I will give bliss of Krishna freely to everyone. And then something very significant Krishna says, you will be loved by everyone, Narad Muni. And although over the ages, many branches of religions have appeared in this world, I will appear on this earth along with my friends and spread the pure love of God to unite everyone. This is a secret prophecy which his pure followers coming down up to the line of his divine grace, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Bhakti Vinod Thakur had predicted that a time will come that irrespective of a caste, creed and religions, race and color, different people from different country will come together in Nadia, the place, the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya, and they will sing uh, Gaurang Mahaprabhu's holy name. And that was fulfilled by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. This was the first stage, was set of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. Let us go to the next stage, step. In Srimad Bhagavatam 10.32.22, there is a beautiful shloka. This pastime, this shloka unfolds because of this pastime. As we all know, middle of the night, Krishna played flute, and the gopis of Vrindavan, they were so much mesmerized by this flute, this sound of flute that they left their children, they left their husband, they left their in-laws, and in the middle of the night, in a dark forest, with the fear of animals and thorns and decoits, without caring, they came to meet Shri Krishna. And to their utter surprise, Krishna told them, that their behavior was not appropriate as per the norms of Shastra. He said, coming and leaving family members, coming in the night is not good for you. It's not good for your name. Please go back. And my worship through my deities, hearing about me, here chanting my name, is the real worship. Please go back. And Gopi's hearts were broken. Krishna could not see the broken hearted Gopis. He sat amongst themselves and with a folded hand, this shloka, Krishna reveals his heart. 
न पारये हम निर्वद निर्वदया संयुजम स्वसाधु कृत्याम विबुधाया उषा पिवास या मा भजन दुर्जर गेह शंख लह संवृश्य तद वह प्रतियातु सुधा साधुना आई एम नॉट एबल टू रिपे माय डेप टू योर स्पॉटलेस सर्विस इवन विद इन दिस लाइफ टाइम ऑफ ब्रह्मा योर कनेक्शन विथ मी इज बियॉन्ड रिप्रोच यू हैव वर्शिप मी कटिंग ऑफ ऑल डोमेस्टिक टाइस विच आर डिफिकल्ट टू ब्रेक देर फॉर प्लीज let your own glorious deeds be your compensation in essence here krishna says i am unable to repay your debt this is the second reason debt krishna feels so much indebted the all powerful supreme lord who is unlimited and who is filled with inconceivable potencies he speaks here that i cannot repay your debt whose debt gopis the simple braj vasi gopis for their menial services krishna the supreme lord cannot repay vaishnava acharya say why first reason gopis had a simple single exclusivity one pointed attention for krishna they renounced everything for krishna still krishna abandoned them in spite of that gopis dealings were always polite and honest and last why krishna is indebted the joy they extracted the highest ecstasy they extracted from krishna's heart and profound happiness it would not have been possible without the presence of gopis just like a music instrument needs needs a musician a cow needs a milkman similarly without gopis without devotees krishna was helpless so we know the debt is always a burdensome anybody who has a debt they know okay it's a burden and it's very difficult under all circumstances to live with this debt and to come out of this inconvenience of debt of gopis krishna resorts to the final solution he says gopis i am unable to pay please let go of my debt a munificence of a money lender uh, if somebody has lent you money and you are not able to pay you just beg to that money lender chhod do uh, jaane do this is the last resort krishna pays but then he is a supreme lord is this the deficiency of his character no this is not the deficiency of character of krishna rather it's a transcendental this inadequacy is not any inadequacy but it's a transcendental ornament of his character where he accepts the subservient position of vaishnavas so there is a very beautiful explanation his holiness radha swami maharaj we have heard so many times as a vishaya and ashraya krishna is a vishaya he is a supreme enjoyer his inherent ability is to love however 
there are unlimited living entities and all the devotees his pure devotees have single pointed exclusivity to love krishna however krishna by his own nature he has to love every living entity so he can't keep that exclusivity what devotees have for krishna by nature krishna cannot have that exclusivity and that is why krishna is a vishaya he is a supreme enjoyer and his devotees are the supreme in the service however krishna as a vishaya no matter how much he tries he is helpless there is a small beautiful story explained on this topic by his holiness shivaram goswami maharaj in vrindavan in one of the kunjas there is a beautiful game of dice being set one side is krishna and all his gopas one side is radharani and all her, her friends madhu mangal has been an advisor of krishna lalita devi was radharani's advisor nandi mukhi and vrinda devi were official referees we need referees na when the both the teams are strong we need a referee and sham krishna's dice was a golden color that of radharani and radharani's dice was dice was of a dark color that of krishna the first bet was krishna's pet dear suranga radharani's dice pet was a do rangini krishna puts the dice and lo and behold krishna won gopas are happy and they very happily took away radharani's do rangini second dice game the they put both of their necklaces as a wager but the gopis had already fed mangal madhu mangal so much that he was intoxicated they had already played in a way that that advisor himself becomes intoxicated so he cannot give proper advice and suddenly madhu mangal shouts krishna put an end to this sari sari is a game but then there was another sarika huh, who was a bird she flew away she thought that madhu mangal is telling krishna to end me everybody started laughing and the second game because of this reason was nullified huh? it was considered as a null third wager now the wages have increased as you know in gambling as you increase the game progresses the wages become bigger and bigger and now krishna's flute on one side and radharani's um, uh, veena pavika on the other side krishna's turn because he had one last time while putting his dice he looked at radharani and simply the innocence of radharani's face he became stunned and the dice went to wrong and lo and behold gopis won and they scream with the joy what do you know gopals what do you know of a dice dice game requires intelligence it doesn't require strength huh? just you go on herding the cows shouting hari hari and keep the cows in the line dice game is not meant for you flute radharani asked for the flute she caught hold of the flute krishna was not ready to give the flute there was a hmm, to and fro uh, we call it in our material uh, tug of war but here it was a tug of love but tug of love with whom the tug uh, the tug of the love was holding the flute and there was a pulling and pushing pulling and pushing and ultimately krishna pulled the flute and kept on his head so that nobody can take it radha and went forward and krishna went behind he lost his balance and he tried to balance himself with his one hand and that moment tak radha and took the flute and gave it immediately to lalita and krishna was running here and there between gopis that they were throwing their um, um, bansri to each and every one and krishna was asking radha rani give my flute radha said your flute 
What do you do? Is there any lack of wood in a Vrindavan? Huh? Why will you take your flute? Aapki flute se to ek sada lota dud bhi garam nahi hoga. Huh? Why we need your flute? And then Krishna plays the tricks, the tricksters of all, amongst all. He looked at somebody and people thought that he's going to dare to go take his flute and immediately took the flat flute from the gopi. So here, the explanation is there. Krishna could have given his flute very easily. He himself immediately said, recently said, he is indebted. Now, an indebted vyakti will not hold on to something. He will try to fulfill, uh, repay his debt. He could have given his debt flute. But when this pastime was going on as a vishaya, during this pastime, the gopas and gopis all were enjoying this pastime and with the corner of his eyes he saw their joy their sweetness their eyes were completely filled with the love uh, for krishna and if he would have taken this fluid that joy would have interrupted and because the joy of his devotees would have been interrupted his joy seeing his devotees enjoying would have interrupted that would have affected his position as a vishaya so this is the reason how krishna as a vishaya cannot repay his debt however krishna thought that he if becomes an ashraya that is he adopts the mood of the ashraya that is the natural inclination if he becomes his own devotee then there will be natural tendency to serve and give and one very very important thing krishna felt that this new identity would equip him equip him with one pointed devotion which he cannot do as a vishaya as a devotee he can give one pointed attention to krishna himself and that is what he admired in his devotees most so krishna decided to come as his own devotee in the form of a ashraya with a completely incorporated that characteristics of ashraya were completely incorporated within the mood of the vishaya and that is the form of gauranga mahaprabhu where the black blackish complexion is completely overcome by a golden form and now krishna was ready to repay his debt why krishna chose radharani's form why he chose radharani's color acharyas explain that from among his devotees krishna chose shrimati radharani's mood of loving devotion as she is the pinnacle of loving devotion and she is the personification of highest love in service it is said that within the love of radharani all the five rasas we know the five rasas of devotion huh? they are included in the entire spiritual and material existence wherever these five rasas of devotions are found devotional service they are included into radharani's mood and bhav and that is why krishna decided to take this form huh? of radharani's mood so now we go to the third past time that is the past time of a imli tala why krishna took this form we get a better understanding one night in the middle of the night krishna left home going through the forest amongst the shadows full moon light was there and while he was walking through the shadows he was looking like a prince of a shadows a black colored krishna was going through the black colored shadows 
solacing the shadows uh, and he entered the place called as uh, yoga pitha where a beautiful kalpa vruksha of imli uh, under that tree krishna sat radharani shrimati radharani had not still arrived and krishna started thinking about radharani's form he looked at the birds he looked at the trees branches animals deers and everywhere he was seeing the form of shrimati radharani and in that intense remembrance he closed his eyes and he went into a deep absorption of unlimited qualities of radharani he became oblivious of everything which was around and while chanting his name his mood he became completely suffused with her qualities and through his intense meditation something very strange happened that his black complexion respectfully got aside and krishna acquired a beautiful golden form of radharani the um, black varna step aside to give away to a suvarna form birds bees animals for them miracles in vrindavan were not new it was a everyday thing but what was happening today was very very special all the birds they came around uh, animals they came around and they were simply gazing at this most beautiful golden color form of krishna and that is a time radharani entered that place and she looked that some golden color boy was sitting and in a deep a thought and she thought this must be some demigod and she started walking but that is the time she heard her own name vibrating and that sound was very very familiar that was the sound which forever always echoed in her heart she identified that sound and she said this is hari this is krishna and she was simply amazed ki who is this Go- why this govinda is golden today the Go- i am seeing the golden govinda and she slowly without disturbing she came closer to have a closer look at krishna and her footsteps made krishna wake up and when krishna got up he was completely perplexed looking at radharani because he was already in the mood of shrimati radharani and when he saw that shrimati radharani just looked kept her neck on the right side and she smiled and she asked krishna oh sham sundar such a beautiful form just now i saw please tell me why did you assume this golden form and krishna said oh radharani i was so much absorbed in your mood that i happily i was wandering through the beautiful forest of your highest emotions and radharani tells krishna nothing in this vrindavan happens without your free will please explain to me a detail about this mood and that time krishna tells to radharani that this form of mind is revealed secretly huh, concealed from the vedas he said i will appear on this earth and di- distribute the treasure in the form of gauranga of your love i will not only taste the sweetness happiness and greatness of your love but i will distribute it to everyone within and without vraja and this is how radharani today thought are he was some time back he was a butter thief 
then he stored, started stealing clothes. And today she has stolen my not only heart, but the, my the mood, my bhav also. And by stealing Radharani's heart and mood, will that will become less? No. Radharani, the more Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna as a Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was distributing love of Shumati Radharani, it was increasing more and more and more. Let us come to one more sweet pastime where this shloka which we read, where Krishna becomes Shamsundar, becomes Gauranga. As we know that Durva Samuni had given blessing to Srimati Radharani that whatever she cooks, whoever eats will taste like nectar, it will be that person will be immune to diseases and he will be free from danger. Yashoda Mai will every day invite Radharani to cook for Krishna. Small Radharani, uh, before going for cooking, she will take blessing. It's, it's, she takes blessings of Rohini Devi before she starts cooking. And today, somehow, Yashoda Mai looking at Radharani was completely intoxicated. Her heart was not in her control. And after Radharani finished her cooking, she called her, made her sit on her lap, started caressing her head. And when somebody is intoxicated, we don't know what you are doing. We are not responsible because of the stage of intoxication. And today, in the kitchen, she just got that dabba of haldi, tamarind, and she went on looking at the Radharani's hand, the beautiful markings on her hands. And she took that turmeric and started rubbing Radharani's lotus hands. And that pink colored lotus hand slowly became completely chalo. She was mesmerized with Radharani. And she says, Radha, Rani, Radha, do you know the meaning of this? Radha Rani said, I don't know. She was stunned. Radha Rani, she didn't realize when Radha Rani took permission and Radha Rani went away. After Radha Rani went away, she came out of her trance, took a deep sigh of sadness because she is not there with her. But she murmured, Kirtida will know. She will tell you. Radharani came out with her friends. And today there was something strange. Radharani said, said that Yashoda Mai does not only bind uh, Damodar. Today she has bound me. The very hand at which I helped her to bind Damodar through my ribbon. Today those very hands Yashoda Mai has bound with her love. And I don't know. How will I be able to release myself from this bondage? Lalita Devi says, don't worry Radharani. Huh? This pond is nearby. Wash it and let us move. Radharani went to that dark colored pond. She was looking at the pond, was in deep thought and started washing her hand in that pond. Started washing, started washing, washing and washing. And during, while she was washing her hand in the water, there were different expressions of joy through her heart were seen on her face. And at one point, Chitra Sakhi said, Oh Radha Rani, what you have done? Just look, you have converted the whole pond into a yellow color. Gopi started laughing. He said, Radharani, it seems you have not washed your hand. You have washed the emotions, the mood of your heart through your hands into these ponds. And they started uh, to move away. Lalita Devi made a statement. Let us move away fast. Because before someone accuses of us, of overriding the Creator's will. The water should be dark. 
and you have converted into yellow. Let's run away. And when Radharani and Krishna, her friends move away, Krishna comes searching for her cow. This was a favorite place of Krishna's cows uh, before going to the um, Vrindavan. Uh, they used to come and drink water here. And Krishna saw everything was all right. Where is my cow? But everything was not all right. When he saw the color of the water, the water was completely different. He just rubbed his eyes and he said, Are, this water is yellow. I have never seen this water to be yellow. And something very, very strong force urged him to go towards the water. And as soon as he saw himself within the water, he was extremely joyful. The same Krishna, same uh, the turban, same Gopavesh, same Morpich, peacock feather, but his color was yellow. Krishna said, Oh, I have become a Gaur Krishna. And then, with an intense urge, he touched the water. And as if a small thunderbolt was stuck, he got a very, very high wave of a joy. He again touched it, and same thing happened. Krishna slowly put his ankle in the water. He had an urge to go into this particular very special water. Then knee dip, then thigh dip, then his neck dip. And then suddenly Krishna is completely submerged in him, into the water. Only his peacock water feather was seen. And he was completely in the water. And in the water, something changed. No, not something. Everything changed. When Krishna was swimming in that water, his mood completely changed. When he came out of the water, Krishna's sapphire luster, bluish sapphire luster had faded. And now his complexion was gold. As if the gold which is smelt for a thousand times, you boil it and boil it and boil it, and that is what gold color comes. That was the golden, the luster of brilliance of golden color Krishna had. And not only his external form changed, his mood was also changing. We have heard so many times His Holiness Radhana Swami Maharaj speaking on this past time. With so much of a deep gravity and emotion, Maharaj speaks, Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? I want to see Krishna. Krishna himself was searching for Krishna. Krishna himself was chanting the name of Krishna. And this was completely new. Krishna was tasting the mood, the happiness and ecstasy of Radharani. And he started running into the forest looking for Krishna. And after some time, his, this, as the effect of the poison fades away, the color slowly faded and he assumed the form of a Krishna. Sham Sundar Krishna. But here we have to remember the Lalita Devi's words. Let us run away before someone accuses us of overriding creator's, creator's will. Creator's will is that Kali Yuga means the age of darkness. But Radharani became instrumental. She became the cause of overriding the Creator's will. And we are very, very fortunate that Shula, Shula Prabhupada gave us this opportunity by being in this International Society for Krishna Consciousness to be part of that overriding will of the Creator. By taking part of this movement of Hare Krishna movement, 
we can turn because of the will not we can turn the chaitanya mahaprabhu and his pure devotees have made this dark age into the age of a golden avatar of chaitanya mahaprabhu let us now come to one more aspect of the form of a gauranga why his holiness gaur govind goswami maharaj in his book of envy very beautifully explains this past time one day radharani found krishna was in the opposite camp gopi chandravali's place radharani today became very angry lalita and vishakha became very 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 angry radharani was in so much of a uh, sulkiness and they decided that we have nothing to do with krishna krishna realized he came running but the guards lalita and vishakha devi said no you are not allowed to enter today vishakha devi was very very angry lalita by nature devi is soft but vishakha devi was very harsh he said you chitter get out do you think that radharani needs you who needs more you or radharani you may be thinking you are a madan mohan but our swamini is madan mohan mohini please get out from here i know one thing vishakha devi says i know one thing one day you will have to cry and cry and cry for our swamini i tell you krishna you will have to cry for her love now get out from here vishakha devi was unusually harsh today krishna became very despondent he went to yamuna removed his gopal vesh and he started rolling in the sand golden sand of uh, bank of yamuna yogmaya purnamasi who is a knower of everything she comes there and asks krishna oh young my dear boy what happened krishna explains her everything purnamasi said these things are not unknown to me i have arranged something for you please meet vrinda devi i will do she will do the network vrinda devi is completely surprised she is amazed that radharani cannot even stay a moment without krishna and today she has gone into such a sulkiness that krishna himself cannot break her sulkiness and this was incomprehensible to her and maharaj further writes he says that under the guidance of shrimati vrinda devi krishna became krishna says uh, radharani says uh, vrinda devi says i'm sorry that krishna today will have to do something very very special give up this your gopavesh give up this your nice curly hair give up your pick of feather do not stand in this tribhanga form give up your mohan murli and take this tamburi ektara huh? and i will and also give up your this sham varna and take this for dress of a huh, sanyasi and i will teach you one song this song you sing and the supreme lord by his own will he changed into the most beautiful form as a sanyasi as a gauranga and he started singing that song given by uh, brinda devi and when he came to the place where radharani was there lalita devi and vishakha devi was amazed by his form he said oh sanyasi thakur who are you krishna says i am a sanyasi i have given up everything from this world and my under the guidance of my gurudev i do not want anything from this material world i have given up everything because i am a beggar vishakha devi says 
Oh, you are a sannyasi. Can you please do one thing? Can you please our Swamini Radharani's stage state right now is very very precarious. She is extremely sad. Can you please see her hand and calculate her fortune? Sanyasi says, "Yes, my guru has taught me to calculate the fortune. So please come inside, but." Please start singing that song which you sang just now. Meanwhile, Lalita Godevi goes inside, and when she wakes up Radharani, the, that song's last sentence Radharani hears, and that song says, "Today Kanu has become a beggar, moving from doorsteps to desk doorsteps, begging for the highest love." And when Radharani wakes up from that deep mood of sulkiness what is her mood ashlishva padam ratam vid pinashtu mam adarshanam marmahatam karoto va yatha tatha va vidadhatu lampato mat prananathas to chayeva this was the mood of radharani which chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, gave us as a last uh, shiksha stratam last verse so lalita brings radharani outside Carefully arranged seats are there. Vishakha Devi gives left hand. Radharani is wearing the veil because she never have any time she looks at any other man. Sanyasi says, "I am a sanyasi. I cannot hold the hand of a woman. You know. So then, how will you calculate?" He said, "I need to see the forehead. If I see the forehead, then I can." Calculate the fortune of your swamini, but then Lalita Devi says it is against our swamini's principle. She never looks at any other male in this world, and she is very strict in this matter. Sanyasi replied, "Arey Baba, I am a dandi sanyasi. Don't you understand? I have no desire. I have given up everything. I am only beggar, and I am sanyasi." I am not an ordinary man, and with that, Radharani's veil is lifted. As soon as Radharani sees Krishna, as soon as Krishna sees, Krishna turns into this Tripanga Sham Sundar again, and that is the time Vishakha Devi is surprised. She said, "Just now I saw you as a Gaur Sanyasi, and just now you have become a." Uh, again, Sham Sundar, and same Vishakha Devi, when she comes as a Ramananda Rai, this particular shloka is there in Chaitanya Charita Murtha. Pahile dekhilun tomara sanyasi swarupa, eb toma dekhi muni Sham Goparupa. So, in our, which is a Chaitanya Charita Murtha Madhya Lila shloka, where Ramananda Rai asks, okay, What is this form? Please. I am perplexed. Please explain to me. So, these different pastimes, we try to understand the questions of Damodar Pandit to Murari Gupta, why he left Shamvarna, why he adopted Sanyasi days, why Krishna went travelled so much to preach, why Krishna was chanting and crying uh, while chanting Radha and Govinda, and fifth, why did he? Distribute pain bhakti in each and every home. One secret is that Radharani is supreme mother. Krishna knows if he has to fulfill his debt. One very effective way of fulfilling the debt of Shrimati Radharani is giving that love which is there in his heart, in her heart. To each and every living entity, when Lord Narsingha Dev killed Hiranyakashipu, and when he went to his place, Lakshmi Devi was Naraj. Hiranyakashipu said, uh, "Sorry, Nars Lord Narsingha Dev said, 'Why you are unhappy?'" Lakshmi Devi was a representative of Radharani. Her heart was pained. She said that you just came out and finished Hiranyakashipu. You did not even give him a little chance. 
that was the heart of a mother narsingadev promises next time when i will come as a ram i will give all the chance uh, uh, to ravan and we know lord ramchandra tries to fulfill the wish of the uh, expansion of shrimati radharani so this mother's heart is always filled with a concern and love for her children the living entity of this material world and that is why he distributed this prem bhakti in each and every home to fulfill to reduce his debt to shrimati radharani gopis left in the middle of the night to meet krishna without the defame of living home and children without caring chaitanya mahaprabhu also left in the middle of the night her young his young wife and mother without caring for the defame of leaving them unprotected unguarded and our param guru shila prabhupad he also left his home at the ripe age what we call it as astachal in a normal material sense that is the age when the sun is about to set at that age he went to the darkest of the dark huh, area of this planet earth in the dark kaliyuga recently i had been to the times square park you have to go there to understand what it means to be the center of dark age and from there shila prabhupad created this movement of iskon our movement is a movement of repaying the debt in tirupati balaji living entities pay debt of a lord of his marriage what he has incurred during his marriage and this our movement is a movement of repaying debt krishna coming as gaurang mahaprabhu is repaying his debt and the entire guru parampara from shad goswami till uh, our brahma vaidya uh, gaurang madhva sampraday and through our iskon we are trying to repay the debt of assisting our guru parampara to repay the debt to their uh, gurus no parai has another meaning also unable to repay the debt krishna becomes indebted to his pure devotees like shila prabhupad bhagavad gita there is a shlok naham prakasha sarvasya yoga maya samavrtah mudayam nabhi janati loko mam ajam avyayam i am never manifest before everyone krishna does not become manifest to anybody he keeps himself hidden <clears throat> i am covered by yogmaya potency mudo yam na bhaji na bi janat those who cannot understand me are mudas they cannot understand me in other words krishna keeps himself hidden krishna keeps himself hidden then how can living entity know krishna here comes the debt for living entities to know krishna pure devotees like shila prabhupad from spiritual world they come to this planet earth and chaitanya charitamrita dr shloka bhakt in 25.127 bhakt ama preme bandhiya che hridaye bhitare yaha netra pade pade taha dekhiya amare that pre, that pure devotee who has bound me up in his heart with the rope of love wherever he looks he sees me jaha dekhe netra pade taha dekha hai amara this bondage of love of a pure devotee he binds krishna in his heart and because he is bound in a pure devotee's heart whatever he speaks krishna name means all attractive but when it comes from the mouth through the chanting of shila prabhupad 
in a times square in a tomskin square park krishna was bound to reveal himself through that name and when krishna revealed himself through the chanting of shri prabhupad the name krishna becomes fructified that living entity becomes attracted not only by his words by his actions and by his desires shila prabhupad had desired that hundreds and thousands of devotees will be there thousands of books will be distributed hundreds of temples will be there on juhu he was walking he said let there be temple and then radha ras bihari ji manifested he came to bharti vidya bhavan and he raised his stick and said there should be temple and shri shri radha gopinath ji manifested here he had a desire that there should be five temples in this city of mumbai and lo and behold uh, we have five and in navi mumbai we have one more temple that is the desire of a pure devotee through which krishna who is indebted to that pure devotee he manifests through his desire in the conclusion the purport of the na parahe shlok of shrimad bhagavatam 10.32.22 shila prabhupad writes a very sweet but very profound and very short purport he writes that in conclusion gopis became eternally glorious eternally glorious by their behavior in the lord's temporary absence such chosen words by shila prabhupad and the mutual love between them and the lord was wonderfully enhanced this is the perfection of krishna and his loving devotees this is a purport taken uh, in the 10th canto from chaitanya charitamrita madhya lila 4.180 so in this purport the temporary absence is very important we living entity in this bhav sagar are in apparent apparent eternal absence from the lord floating in this ocean in lakhs of living species but shila prabhupad has given this iskon by which this eternal absence from the lord can become temporary not only temporary through the following principles given by shila prabhupad this temporary absence in this material world also will become glorious hare krishna shila prabhupad ki jai Please forgive me. I have five minutes over time. Will not have time for question. One or two questions, or any comments. Jai Shri La Prabhupad ki jai ho. Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai ho. Shri Shri Radha Gopinath Astra Sakhi ji ki jai ho. Gopal ji ki jai ho. Gaur. Thank you.